Well, good morning and welcome to our ramble today, the last one of 2018, and then we'll be into 2019. Well, here comes the Christmas pudding man. Morning, Frank. And we'll be on our way shortly to Sunderland Point, as you call. And Bernard will be telling us just what we're going to be doing. Morning, Norman. Good morning, Bernard. It's a pretty dull, miserable day, but nevertheless, we're, uh, we're here in Overton at the Globe, which is under new management, but not open as yet. And we're going to go walk along this road here, and then across the fields. Could be a little bit boggy today, but uh, never mind. Along here, <laughs> and eventually onto the sands at Middleton. Middleton Sands. The, the tide's in today, so it's going to be interesting. We're going to walk all along <laughs> the shoreline here. All along. All along. Past Sambo's Grave. Around the point, if we can get round to this. And then uh, through Sunderland Point itself, the village. And then this road will be closed because it's tidal. So we'll have to strike inland. Down here, down here, and back. Six miles. Very good. Easy walk. Easy walk. It could be more than. <laughs> could be more than. <laughs> All right. Very good. Well, there we are. Bernard's told us where we're going. Oh, Frank, the Christmas pudding man. So he's told us where we're going, and then we'll be on our way. Few in number today. A lot of on holiday, visiting family, but. To worry, worry, yeah. I'm going to have a good time. The weather's not bad at all, quite warm, just overcast, no rain, so that's good. So, as you saw from the golden ball, we just turned off to the right down the rail lane a little bit and then turned in. We don't know what that, uh, that building is. It's a round thing, whether it's a training circle for horses, I'm not just sure. Somebody might email me after seeing this and let me know what it is. So, I'm going to walk into this, around this farm, actually keep to the outskirts of it. Little dog there having a bark at us. Seen different sorts of styles to these. But we're managing to get through okay. Oh dear, here's the mud. Well, not to worry, it doesn't look like there's a right lot of it. Now we're coming up to the shore. And we'll be having our coffee break here. Oh, just after the 11 o'clock. It looks to be quite a big caravan park there. And then there will be the power station in the distance. But now we're looking towards Sunderland Point and that's where we're aiming. And this is a new thing being built by, uh, by Sambo's Grave and uh, there's actually going to be a camera obscura being put up and it looks like they've built the wall a lot better there that's the obscura going to be just how high it'll be and I'm not sure but uh, I'll have to come back another year and see how things are going on and that's Sambo's grave there so they've walled it off very nicely it's uh, made a right nice job of it well they got EE e e money for it And uh, I'm not sure there's lottery money as well involved, but certainly they got uh, EC money to, to do it. So we're walking now towards the headland. This is the Paul Burnett Lighthouse. It was damaged the other year, it had to be rebuilt. A ship ran into it. I think it 
give it a glancing blow and knocked it sideways and uh, it was still standing but it all had to come out. Just looking around there. Glas and Dock in the distance. And that was third of uh, the um, oh, I forgot the name. Anyway, here we are, Sunderland Point again. Defibrillator there. We hopefully won't be needing that. Seventeen fifteen, it's an old buildings, aren't they? So we'll be having our uh, dinner when we get round to the front part of Sundle Point. That's the lane that leads to Sambo's grave. And this is somebody from the house there. Uh, nearby here and uh, made this sculpture. So just round the corner here we'll be having dinner. That's the tide mark there for us to, to as you can measure how high it's coming. So dinner time. There's just two of them around the corner there. The tide's coming in but it won't worry us because we're going around the other side walking on the wall higher up. So it doesn't matter if it does come up too, too much. Oh yes. I told him what a fancy dress would do today, but there we go. At least he didn't wear it all the way around. So Derek and Frank having a, a bit of a competition between them. Right, Frank, can you hear me? Yeah. Right, so <laughs> this guy, in. he goes into a pub in Dublin and all the three pints, puts them on, on the table, takes a sip out of each, then goes back to the bar and gets another three, you see. So the bar man said, you know, as soon as I pull a pint, it starts to go off, so why don't you just let me pull one, empty that, and then, and so on. He says, well, he says, it's, it's like this, he said. I had three, well, there was three mates, and uh, one has left to go to New Zealand, and the other has left to New Zealand in America now, but we decided that every time we had a drink, would do it like this, you see, in memory of one another. He said, so that's why I do it. Oh, right, okay. So the barman was uh, assured, you know, that there was some reasoning. And every week he used to go in, same man, do the same thing, three pints, three, a sip of out of each one and so on. And the locals, they got to know him and observe what he did. And so one day he went in and he ordered two. Yeah. And this this uh, silence kind of uh, descended on, on all these mates in this bar. So the bartender says, I'm not wanting to uh, intrude in your grief, but uh, just to say that me and, and all the rest of your friends here are very sad at your loss. So the, the guy looked a bit bemused and he says, well, why do you say that? He says, well, we've noticed that you've just ordered two, so it must be the case uh, that one of your friends has died. So he says, no, nothing like that. He says, uh, I've been up drinking. <laughs> <laughs> two guys live in the outback in Australia, okay, and they see in this magazine an advert from the Queen of England for footmen. So they apply for this post and were really surprised when at my expenses they get flown to London for an interview. 
And it's the Queen that's interviewing these two yokels from out back in Australia. And she says, uh, very pleased to meet you two, but uh, obviously running alongside of my carriage, I need people with good ankles, so please can I see your ankles? So I take shoes and socks off. And she says, yes, they, they look uh, very strong and sturdy. And she said, uh, and of course, the, the breeches that you wear will expose your knees, so I need to uh, see your knees. So they expose the knees. And she says, well, that looks very presentable. No nobles or anything. Yeah, that's excellent. So she says, well, all that remains now is for me to see your testimonials. So, so <laughs> nine years later, when we were released from prison, one says to the other, do you know, if we'd have had a bit more education, we might have got that job. <laughs> So Bernard had been trying out his jokes over the Christmas period and he decided he'd tell us some. So there, yeah, that's into the Santa. Anyhow, we're at the end of the walk and we'll hopefully see you next year. So it's bye for now.